This is part two in our Dear Prosciutto Processing video series. I'm going to link right now to the first video. If you haven't watched that, check it out. It gives you the whole background on this. And um, we're now ready for phase two with this, which is to uh, wash it off, lard it, and season it, and hang it for the long aging process. And what I want to say before I get into this is a reminder again, I'm not... Uh, trying to suggest that I'm professional with this, or that I have that I suggest you do this, or anything like that. I've done this in the past, and it's worked well for us. So I'm just sharing my process. Take it with a grain of salt, quite literally, since we're salting this. Um, and my friend Sam made a comment on the first video that this actually technically isn't dear prosciutto; it's carne de cervo crudo. I think is the Italian way to really mangle saying that, which is dry aged uh, venison. But we'll call it dear prosciutto for now because it's easiest for me. This has lost the weight that's necessary to move on to the next stage. If you remember from the first video, we salted this with 6% of its weight in salt and allowed the blood and the, the fluids to be pulled off. And we measured the weight of this and once it has lost 15% of its weight, we're ready to then wash it, uh, rinse off the salt crusts that are on there and put on the lard to help unify the moisture throughout and add whatever seasonings we want and allow it to cure on. From the initial weight, uh, the initial measurement of the weight was about 5 kilograms. 15% of lost weight would mean 4.2 kilograms, 4.25, and it's actually gone ahead and dried down a little bit further. And you'll notice it's way firmer um, it's shrunk a little bit, it's thinner, uh, it, has not, it has no surface moisture on it really anymore, and it's a little bit less than 4.25, that should be fine. I think it's actually probably safer to let it dry a little bit further than to not have it dry enough. The other thing you may notice, and I, we have a cutaway shot of this, is molds have been forming on the surface, and that's actually part of the whole curing process, and I think a really great example People might see this and say, oh my god, it's gone completely bad. But if you look closely in here, white and blue and white and green are supposed to be very excellent indicators that penicillin, penicillin uh, molds or fungus are starting to colonize this meat, which is actually what will do the true deep fermentation. And I went through with uh, some pure vinegar and a clean cloth and just wiped off any other off colors. There's a little bit of a brown color here or there, so I'll go through and touch those up. The vinegar will help kill those and select for the white and green, the white and blue molds that will do the really good work. Um, from what I understand of it, if you see yellow, orange, or black molds forming on the surface, those can be toxic or dangerous. Make your own decision about what you want to do there. By all accounts that I've read, vinegar and a cloth, if you're diligently wiping those off, it'll select for the beneficial molds over time. So there's a long-winded thing. It's dried down enough. I'm going to take this, rinse off the surface salt, and then pat dry it down so it's surface dry, and then we'll come back to us uh, applying some homemade lard and some seasoning, and then we'll get it hanging in the basement. So stick around. Okay, so the surface salt has been rinsed off and it's been patted dry and we're ready to do the larding and the hanging. Sasha, would you tell us what herbs you've added to this beautiful soft lard? Um, we, I have black peppercorns, coriander seed, um, some bay leaf, and uh, peppers that we had dried all ground up. Yeah, the Bolivian rainbow, really wonderful, super spicy hot pepper. and. What I want to share here again is that this is the first time we're doing this part of the process. Traditionally, this is what uh, everyone has done. In the first time I did this that worked well for us, I just let it continue to dry down and it worked beautifully. Everyone that had it said it tasted great, but it was saltier and it was way drier than it could have been. So this should really help uh, create that tenderness and that softness. So the lard will put a little bit on and what I'm going to do is go through and gently work that over. And of course, I washed my hands with soap before I did this. 
Although I will say, I don't think, I think traditionally most cultures on the face of the earth have figured out preserving and working with meats in ways where it's no antibacterial soap and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> well, you didn't use antibacterial. No, of course I didn't. But <laughs> I'm just saying like we didn't sterilize and do all that kind of stuff. We're using thoughtful and careful and clean situations, but we're not going crazy with that. Um, so we're going to put this thin layer of lard across this whole meat. Once that's applied, we'll find a nice place in the basement where it's roughly 50 degrees Fahrenheit-ish, roughly 50% relative humidity-ish, more or less stable, and uh, we'll go ahead and hang it. And then I've seen mixed reviews from people about the necessity of putting cheesecloth around it. From what I've understood from my readings, the cheesecloth is not a critical component so much as a way to keep bugs off of the meat, and since we're in the middle of winter, there's really no flies or fruit flies or that kind of stuff. So my plan is to hang this to allow good airflow around it, and maybe we'll lightly drape a cloth over it to keep uh, any dust or debris from landing on it. We'll just take a quick shot of that once it's there. From there, it's basically, you wait. You look at it once in a while, and um, six months, eight months, even a year later, what we're looking for is a, is a net loss of one-third of the weight of this in total. And so we'll make another video in six months or eight months from now with the final, uh, final results of this and the taste test. But I will say, as a complete novice and working with basic recipes and trying to be careful and thoughtful and observant, this feels like a very reasonable way to work with high quality meat and preserve it without refrigeration or fuel or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm very excited to have a lot more of this going in our life and have year after year good misos and good prosciuttos and all those sorts of things happening here. So um, one of the many things to ferment and keep alive in our system. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in, well, we'll see you before then, but we'll see you in about a year on this one.